Hi sons, hi sons, but hi son, and welcome to my channel where I help you to stay up to date with the latest crypto and financial news, articles, research, and other stuff that I find interesting. Let's just get into this. This is going to be a long one. It's from Coin Telegraph, and it says Bitcoin in Senegal. Why is this African country using Bitcoin? Out of the ashes of scams, meddling foreign interests and traffic jams in a country evolving into a thriving circular Bitcoin economy. Dakar, the capital of the West African nation of Senegal, now boasts an annual Pan-African Bitcoin conference. Over 10 merchants accepting Bitcoin, a local peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange and a budding Bitcoin community. What's more, the speed at which Bitcoin progress is unwinding is staggering. The city hosted the Dakar Bitcoin Days conference just 10 months after the country's first in real life Bitcoin meetup. All of this is despite a brutal bear market that has put a big dent in Bitcoin adoption. Why is Bitcoin bubbling in Senegal, in this country, on the path to hyper Bitcoinization? That is a phrase, check it out. Or at least more entrenched Bitcoin adopted, adoption and use. Could Senegal be the next country to follow in El Salvador's footsteps? I wanted to find out. I had missed out on the inception of Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador in 2019. So I wanted to explore what a bottom-up Bitcoin circular economy might look like in West Africa. This is that story so far. A colonial currency. The West African Economic and Monetary Union, CFA, franc is an awful currency. The French created it, they control it. its conversion rate, they even design and print the notes to use in Africa. A Frenchman sitting in the historic university town for Clermont Ferrand conjured up the designs in use on CFA notes used by millions of Africans across 13 countries despite the fact that they might never have set foot in Africa. There's a few documentaries on this on YouTube and just um, type in CFA franc and uh, Africa. You will get a lot of results and uh, the results will, yeah, they will shock you. The CFA will just continue. The CFA is currently pegged to the euro at the fixed rate of uh, 455.957 to 1. Great uh, conversion rate there. <laughs> Just joking. In, 20, in 1994, the peg with the former French franc was slashed from 1 to 505 to 1 to 100. The currency devaluation instigated by France and its collaboration with the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, the the two organizations that um, has a big part in how the world is run and who gets what. And uh, yeah, check it out as well. Yeah, well, they wiped out the savings of the Senegalese people. Great job. To cap it off, all of French officials sit on regional central bank boards across French speaking Africa and still hold substantial powers, including veto rights. So this is one of the ways that France exceeds power over its former colonies in Africa. It's by monetary, monetary policy. Yep. African countries using the CFA, CFA franc currencies, West African, Central African. Uh, you know, it's Senegal, Guinea, Mali, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Togo, Benin, Niger, Chad, Central African Republic, Cameroon, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and so forth. Alex Gladstein of the Human Rights Foundation once explained, unlike a typical fiat currency, the system was far more insidious. It was monetary colonialism. Exactly. From Cuba to Turkey, South Africa to Serbia, I've never seen a greater demand or need for monetary emancipation than in Central or West Africa, 
than the most likely candidate for West Africa's economic and monetary freedom is Bitcoin. And may add other digital countries that are not centralized, but actually decentralized that no one actually directly controls. Making lightning connections. On Twitter in January 2022, I noticed that a few bars in the expat area of Dakar have begun accepting Bitcoin. You can pay for a crepe or a bisa, a refreshing local drink that, that's made with hibiscus flour over the lightning network that is spending distance from the beach. You know, the lightning network is a network that is built upon uh, Bitcoin and uh, the aim of the Lightning Network is to make Bitcoin transactions faster. Because we all know that at the moment, Bitcoin is kind of slow. My thoughts immediately go to El Salvador's grassroots adoption initiative, Bitcoin Beach, the effort of which culminated in Bitcoin becoming legal tender in El Salvador. Yeah, you should also check that out. Now at once that I must speak to the person behind these efforts. A tall, softly spoken Senegalese man spent a chunk of his professional life working in France. Nora, what his real name, is a Bitcoin advocate like no other. There's a picture of him in the article. Returned to Senegal in 2021 and was disappointed to see that his friends and even family members had lost money to Ponzi schemes like Petron Pay, never heard of it, things like that, or Limo. I haven't heard of that either, so I guess I'm lucky. And if you have not spent or put money into those projects, you should bless your heart. So, and if you have, well, I hope to, yeah, I hope that you have learned something. And the other popular crypto scams in Africa. So, we set up the Bitcoin in Senegal com community, he tells Coin Telegraph. And quote, I was the first one in our first e meets on Clubhouse. We were maybe three or four, but I kept going with two sessions per week, then one session per week because we used to have 10, 20, sometimes hundreds of people listening in. He arrived in Senegal at the onset of COVID. Yeah. You know the the virus. However, the pandemic chaos did not dash his dreams of making Bitcoin the go to currency in his homeland. Peer to peer, by traveling in Senegal in February 2022, I attended the country's first ever Bitcoin meetup. Not only was this a milestone event in itself, so previously meetups were conducted online or on the application clubhouse. But the caliber of the guest in attendance is jaw-dropping. The room is brimming with non-fungible token promoters, Bitcoin maximalists, entrepreneurs, central bankers, and even professors from Dakar's most prestigious universities. The atmosphere is a stark contrast with a Bitcoin meetup is usually attend in the, I, I usually attend in Europe or America. Or to be frank, it is a bunch of white millennial males Preaching the fall of fiat currencies. I also see Nuri on board three more restaurants onto the Bitcoin network. Interestingly, a lot of these merchants use Bitcoin in its purest form, a peer to peer cash system. They accept Bitcoin based on Lightning transactions and they hold on to it with the intent of using Bitcoin as money in a circular economy. Nor is building an app that allows merchants to cash out in local currency and offers a personalized service where they can get their hands on cash if need be. I left Senegal in March 2022 with a spring in my step. I felt inspired by the fact that the places that need it the most, they are enthusiastic Bitcoin people devoting their time and efforts to educating others about money and ultimately Bitcoin. Now, fast forward to August 2022, and I couldn't quite believe that Nora is texting me saying he had plans to host a Bitcoin forum in Senegal. It will be the first time that Bitcoiners from all over the world would assemble on the African continent to share their passion for Bitcoin 
and strategize how best to adopt the currency. I vowed to myself that I absolutely must attend. Not only is this a country that I'm increasingly attached to, but I fully want to observe, participate and report on the Bitcoin movement in Senegal and Greater West Africa. The Car Bitcoin Days The Car Bitcoin Days gathered enthusiasts and econ economists from across Africa and a pan-African celebration of magic internet money from Cameroon to Congo, Mali to the Ivory Coast and the Central African Republic. There were interested parties from all over the continent. As Nur says in an interview while pointing at the continent of Africa, and he says, Africa will fly if we all go together. France is the official language. No, not France, but French. <laughs> it says France in, France in the article. But French is the official language in Senegal, while Wolof is by far the most widely spoken. One of the unique and well thought out aspects of this conference is that there are Dakar Bitcoin days, talks in three languages, English, French, and Wolof, with events in the latter attracting the highest attendance. The conference featured beginner-friendly seminars that touch on the economy, finance, security, and Bitcoin fundamentals. For experts, panels on cryptography take place while Debates such as Is Bitcoin Halal provide cultural insights into using Bitcoin in Senegal. A 97% Muslim country, plus the demographics skew incredibly young. The average age in the country is roughly 19, and the conference is brimming with students and young people. During the conference and its conversations, Nuri shared his vision for Senegal with me. Senegal will lead West Africa out of the darkness of currency colonization, he explains. However, there needs to be a level of decentralization in the messaging regarding Africa. The quote here says, I want the message to switch. Africa is not a country, it's a continent. That's why we call it Dakar Bitcoin Days. If you come to Senegal, you will meet Senegalese. If you go to Mali, you will meet Mali people. There might be some similarities, such as some shared histories and overlapping cultures in Africa. But he explains that Africa is just as varied or more than Europe. Much like Bitcoin, the movement is decentralized. Each, each region and area of Africa will eventually run with and adopt Bitcoin. That's not to take away from the tremendous sense of Pan-Africanism that Africa benefits from. It's something that the Europeans or Americans as a continent may not relate to. I am British and European, but I do not relate with a Serbian the way that I, that a Senegalese may relate to a Zimbabwean, despite being thousands of miles apart. Bitcoin in Senegal. During the conference, I also set out to interview merchants who accept Bitcoin. I speak to the owner of a French expat bar that has recently begun accepting Bitcoin, despite now being completely new to decentralized currency. The proprietor, Gary, is happy to see new customers coming to his bar thanks to Bitcoin. While we were here, we managed to convince him to accept Bitcoin at his brand new tattoo parlor. And uh, there's pictures of them. Senegalese so surf team coach René Larissi managed Prina, the first restaurant to accept Bitcoin. As one of Senegal's best sporting experts after football, Senegal won the African Cup of Nations in 2022. He's a leader and a trusted voice in the community. I also interview Mama Bitcoin, who has been trading Bitcoin for fish on the Atlantic coast for the past three years. It's a visionary move in a country where cash reigns king and banking services are generally for the financially privileged. Banks in Africa charge high fees and incur strict user requirements. Withdrawing cash, for example, can cost a few dollars. 
throughout my second trip in Senegal, I gave out Bitcoin to more than 70 people. The process is simple. I ask them to download a Lightning wallet, usually wallet of Satoshi, and they tap receive. The wallet is custodial, meaning they don't actually hold the keys to their Bitcoin. As a result, they are trusting that wallet of Satoshi will not perform as Sam Bankman freed and run off with their funds, but for newbies. I think it's a great place to start. Send them a few thousand Satoshis, which is maybe a dollar or two in Bitcoin. I find it easy to hand out sats in Senegal in comparison with other countries to which I travel. People are eager to get hold of my money, and they are eager to learn, trade, or simply save with a currency that cannot be debased or stolen in the way that the CFA can. And that is a huge, huge, huge point for both Bitcoin and other um, capped coins. I gave away sets on the beaches, on the sidewalk, during the conference, in restaurants and bars, to taxi drivers, and in tips to the hotel staff. For the most part, I give Bitcoin to young people, boys and girls, aged anything from 16 upwards to young men. Whereas the average age of the United States is about 40. In Senegal, a very young population. It's no surprise that a mobile native internet-based currency would fly if it was given the right to take off in Africa. It makes me wonder, why are people so keen to get hold of Bitcoin here? Well, it is because in the West, we buy Bitcoin through exchanges. A select few individuals buy peer-to-peer and a tiny slither of Bitcoin enthusiasts actually earn Bitcoin. In West Africa, it's very hard to get your hands on the coin. Worse still, it's very hard to secure Bitcoin. None of the established hardware wallets like Ledger, Trezor or Cold Card shipped to Senegal. Ledger sponsored the conference and may start shipping to West Africa, where it is currently a serious pain point. And uh, there's tweets from Tiff. Don says, great opening ceremony for Dakar Bitcoin Days, sponsored by Ledger. Sounds like, uh, it looks like they're having a good time. Continuing on, in light of these barriers and opportunities, it gives greater credence to the idea that a Bitcoin circular economy could take off in Senegal. People want Bitcoin. There are no exchanges to buy from, and international tourists coming to Senegal can spend Bitcoin. Bitcoin could, therefore, through the path to becoming peer-to-peer money, as its white paper instead intended in the country. Mobile money meets lightning. Plus, mobile money networks have taken root and flourished across Africa. First rising to fame in Kenya, where the global recognized mobile money company M-Pesa was founded, mobile money companies have popped up across Africa like Apple stores in European cities. Most Africans nowadays have a smartphone. They might not have regular electricity or access to free drinking water, but they can get online. Failing that, it is highly likely that individuals possess an SMS mobile phone an old cell phone that can send and receive texts. Thanks to mobile money, users can spend and receive payments much like a bank transfer. You can simply text your friend's phone with credit. In Senegal, the biggest mobile payments company is called Vave. The Vave logo is found in taxi companies, restaurants, bars and cafes. It's a bit like the Lightning Network, but it's slower, a lot more expensive and it uses local currency. I tried to track down an employee at Wave to Orange Pill then and introduce them to the Bitcoin network. And as luck would have it, I bump into one uh, into a bar while watching the World Cup, immediately ask him to download the wallet and send him some Bitcoin. The internet connectivity was very patchy where we sat, so it wasn't the best and it took a, f- a few seconds to Network error. Yeah, I would. Uh, I really don't like. 
like the network to go down when you're sending money across networks. It's it's very stressful and can be a real pain. I connect to the bar's Wi-Fi and send him the Bitcoin. He was impressed and said he'd come along to the conference the following day, but I didn't see him again. There was a funny moment during the interview with a marketing director from Wave. They shared that he met and hung out with Satoshi in Senegal. Apparently, he was a VC kind of guy who went around drunk as a skunk, partying and investing in companies. However, it gets me thinking. You have a country that is accustomed to transacting via mobile phone, using nothing but a mobile number. That's despite the fact that the UX for mobile money is quite clunky. Yet everyone and their goat, yes, I tried to interview a goat about Bitcoin, see a documentary, knows how to use it. <laughs> I would like to see that documentary one day. Perhaps not right away, but one day. Senegal has a power sapping currency, a young digitally native population, Bitcoin leaders and mentors in respected position in society, an annual conference, an increasing number of merchants accepting Bitcoin, and, uh, and as advised, it is culturally acceptable to send money via mobile phones. It's another instrument in Africa's Bitcoin tool, be- tool belt and a way in which the current tenant could effectively leapfrog the de- developed world. So why can't we leapfrog mobile money with the Lightning Network? It's the question. The author of this uh, fantastic uh, in-depth article, his name is Joseph Hall, and um, it was very insightful t- to get to share this article with you, and I hope that you got something out of it. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next one. Hold it up.